Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the True Dollar web series. Wishing a happy new year to all of our viewers from all of us here at Texas Trust Credit Union. This year, Texas Trust will be presenting a monthly webinar on Facebook every second Tuesday of the month to help our community and members manage their finances better during the tough times we are living in. My name is Washima Huck, I'm a business and community engagement partner for Texas Trust representing Arlington and Mansfield, and I will be your moderator today. You are welcome to engage with us by leaving comments or questions during the live session. We will be sure to answer as many questions as we can in the allotted time or get back to you individually. Because of COVID-19, most of us have experienced some sort of financial turmoil in the past year. We are still trying to push past the storm and make sure our finances stay as strong as possible. In the process, you may be wondering how you can manage your money better or stretch every dollar. In this hour, we hope to present you with a few solutions. But first, we at Texas Trust would like to highlight some resources accessible to our communities. So every month, we will be highlighting a nonprofit organization located in one of our Texas Trust towns. January's spotlight nonprofit organization is Mission Arlington. I would like to invite Jim Bergen as well as Ms. Tilly Bergen from Mission Arlington to share how they are an incredible resource for our greater Arlington community. Jim will actually stay on until the very end to take any questions our viewers may have for him. Over to you. Okay, um, I asked Ms. Tilly to come and share today a little bit about what we do here at Mission Arlington. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. Uh, we always enjoy sharing uh, what we believe God is doing here at Mission Arlington in this city and in this metroplex. Um, we started in 1986, basically taking church to the people. And our definition of church is what we do seven days a week, almost 24 hours a day. And it's become a way of life where we go out into the community, uh, have Bible studies in different apartments and neighborhoods. And out of that, you find people that have special needs, whether it's a lack of food or kids not in school because there's no school supplies or if Christmas comes and there's no tree. Or as we walked into a home this week, there was only a Christmas tree and no bed, no dresser, nothing. But they had at the center of their home a tree. And so we're able to provide the help that's needed because this community has come together in a belief system that all people are significant and everybody needs a chance regardless of their circumstances. And so it is such an honor and a privilege for us to be able to help them with, let's just say medical this morning. I don't have, the lines were long of people needing a medical clinic. Everything is free and yet doctors and nurses and interns and students from UTA and other colleges are here at our medical clinic trying to help people because they have crisis of physical conditions and no way to, to get help because they don't have the resources. Our dental clinic was packed full this morning of the same thing, people. When you go to a dentist, which isn't fun, but again, if there's no resources for people to get the help that they need. And so again, this community has come together with dentists and hygienists. And just a few minutes ago, I just came to the end because someone was supplying the two brushes and toothpaste so that everybody leaving the clinic today will get a, a know-how of how to take care of their teeth. And then of course you'll find the, the clothes and the food and a counseling center and furniture and um, whatever that need happens to be. We help with rent, uh, trying to help people get out of what well, we, we prevent homelessness. Let me just say it that way. And so when people give up their resources, it keeps the people's electricity on or keeps them in their homes until they can get their jobs back or learn how to manage 
It's just the crisis during these days has been the sudden loss of jobs where people have never been in that situation before. So our front room is full of folks here for the very first time saying, help me. We don't want to be homeless and we don't know what to do. And so we have a small staff and a large population of volunteers and many, many more needed. We need so many volunteers to, to help people. We pray with them. We, they get to see the Billy Graham videos and then we share relationships and then we make home visits. Try to go out now with the COVID stuff. We're at their doors and we try not to, we, we keep all protocol, that's critical, and mask and all that. But still the people are significant. And even though they're standing in line out front, we make sure they have chairs, if it's raining, they have umbrellas. And we want to take care of what we believe God has given us to do. And so partnering with you folks would be just a huge thing for us because of the compassion and kindness we know you folks have. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's absolutely our honor to have you on today. And thank you so much for the services you're providing for our community. And, I'm, and we're really glad you're staying on till the end. If any of our viewers have any questions, we do ask you to use the comment function to ask us your questions. We'll try to go through as many questions as we can today. Um, if there are any questions that would be best answered offline, we'll be sure to message you directly. Thank you. So now a little bit about Texas Trust Credit Union. Our mission is to build brighter financial futures. We have been helping people live brighter since 1936. We are a not-for-profit company, which means that we like to invest our profits back into the credit union and help our members and communities by offering higher savings rates, lower loan rates, and through community engagement. Now, I would like to introduce our presenter for today, Ms. Whitney McLeod, who is our Senior Vice President of Retail Operations. Whitney has been working for Texas Trust for 10 years. She has 17 years of banking experience. She obtained her undergraduate degree from the University of Texas at Arlington. I am also an alum, so I have to say go Mavs. And she's currently a student of uh, Southwest CUNA Management School. Whitney, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Thank you so much, Washima. And thank you to everyone who has taken the time to join us uh, for this web series. We are very excited and excited to see what comes out of the future out of these. The goal of today's seminar is to help give you tools to plan and manage your finances effectively during COVID-19, as well as reduce the stress that comes along with managing your finances during this challenging time. Some of the things that we'll go over today are some budgeting tips, how to effectively manage debt, some tips for savings, about purchasing and refinancing a home, some information on retirement and investments, and then lastly, some COVID-19 resources to be able to utilize down the road. So first, we're going to start with budgeting during COVID-19. So during this time, we have gone through a lot within these last months, and finances is just one part of it that can be very stressful. So if you are at a loss of income due to a layoff or reduction in hours, it's important to take stock of your savings, make sure that you know your income sources and what expenses that you have. So that way you can try to spend less during this time. The first thing I wanna talk about was needs versus wants. I know it's kind of silly. We started talking about needs versus wants when we were kids. I actually have a four and seven year old that get their needs and wants very confused. Um, but this is a great one for you to think about during this time. So one example is need, we need food. Um, unfortunately, when it kind of goes across the board is when we need, say, DoorDash because it's a little bit easier to come to our house instead of us cooking. So that kind of falls into the want category. Um, I would love to hear some of your wants that kind of sometimes you try to play as a need sometimes. If you want to kind of comment in the, in the comments below, we'd love to hear those. The next thing is writing down your goals. Did you know you are 42% more likely to complete that goal if you write it down? 
that is crazy to me, 42%. That is, that's a big accomplishment of getting closer to making sure and meeting that goal. So making sure you know what your goals are. Is it to save money? Is it to spend less? Is it to consolidate debt? Whatever it might be, you wanna make sure and write those down. Then creating a budget or a spending plan. I know not everybody is a number person and not everybody likes to see what you're spending your funds on, but it's very eye-opening when you take that time to really write down a budget for your day, your week, your month, and you stay on track with that. Then having an emergency fund. No one knew we were coming into the pandemic like we were. It was very unknown. So if that emergency fund was set up, you have funds set aside to be able to help you in the time of need. So making sure, planning for those unknowns. Then lastly, um, making sure you track your progress. So where are you at on your budget? How are you doing with your emergency fund? And then making sure you're looking at your long-term goals. We won't always be in the midst of what we're in today and making sure that you are still planning for the future and being proactive. Next, I want to give you some information on some budgeting resources. So like I said earlier, not everybody is a numbers person and they want something a little bit easier to be able to help them budget and make things a little bit simpler. So there are some really cool apps out there. Um, two of them are Every Dollar and Mint, which are apps that you can download on your phone that you can connect to your online banking for your financial institutions. Um, if you are that numbers person, you have the opportunity to create the Excel spreadsheet to be able to create your own and work from that. And then lastly, but not least, um, if you are a member here at Texas Trust Credit Union, within your online banking, we have a very cool software called Money Manager, where it can actually allow you to help set those budgets, meet those goals, and drive to the future plan. So make sure if you haven't checked that out, go out there and check that out. Next thing I want to talk about is managing debt during COVID-19. Unfortunately, we have debt all the time, even not in the middle of a pandemic. The pandemic just unfortunately makes it a little bit more stressful. So the first action step that I would say is really analyzing what current debt you have outstanding and then creating that plan that we talked about a little bit earlier. Do you want to consolidate that? Do you want to look at um, maybe refinancing a home to pull equity, different things? So to do that, my recommendations are first looking at all your um, uh, lending items you have out there and identifying what interest rates you have on them. We all have credit cards to different merchants that we don't realize how, how high that interest rate is. So making sure that you identify those rates and then you try to go tackle those high ones first and try to get those paid off to save long-term on interest. And then if you do have to make purchases on a card, making sure that you're putting it on the one with the lowest interest rate. Make sure and save on the interest if you can. We have a great credit card here at Texas Trust. If you're interested, please leave information in the comments and we can get one of our financial service officers, our, our SSAs to reach out to you to help you out with that. Then um, there is also promotional things that are out there. So I know we have, we have done in the past, and I think we actually have one going on right now for a balance transfer promo. So being able to do a balance transfer onto a credit card to consolidate that debt into one card, that way saving money on that. Just remember anytime that you do one of those promotions, make sure you pay it off within the time allotted. You don't want to acquire that interest um, after the time period if you don't have to. Then debt consolidation loan. So here at the credit union, we do personal loans where we have helped members in the past where they are able to consolidate their debt into one loan. Instead of making several little minimum payments on credit cards, they're able to roll that into one and pay it off a lot quicker than what they would if it was on a credit card. And then also know your options. There is government assistance out there potentially that you could qualify for. So making sure and go and look through all avenues to be able to see what options you have for you. And then again, like I said earlier with the credit card, we would love to help you with any way um, kind of coming up with a plan. So you can actually set an appointment with one of our financial counselors here at the credit union. We do a lot. I know people aren't getting out as much, but the cool thing is we do a lot through phone. We do a lot through email. So there's other options instead of you having to physically come to a location. So we would love to help you with that. 
Let's go into credit basics. I would like to talk a little bit on establishing and improving your credit. So just like we were talking about earlier with effectively managing your debt, one way to manage that debt is ensure that you're taking care of your credit so that way you qualify for the lowest interest rate and you're not having to pay higher rates on things. So one of the easier options um, is making sure and pay bills on time. I set re reminders on my phone to remind me of things coming due. So that way I make sure and have that payment done on time. You can set up auto pay. I know some people aren't as comfortable with that, but that's another option as well. Here at the credit union, we actually offer secured credit cards and secured loans for our members. That is a great way to utilize your funds to help build or rebuild your credit. Then making sure that if you do have credit cards, making sure your balance does not exceed 30% of your credit limit. There are a lot of times, unfortunately, where the merchant will not tell you not to allow that balance to go higher to that. Because what happens is once it goes over 30%, there is potential of it to negatively impact your credit score. Making sure that you are repaying old delinquencies. I know it's very easy sometimes to say, well, I'm just gonna let it kind of ride and it'll be on there for whatever time period, but making sure and taking care of those. Unfortunately, what can happen is debts can be sold to other creditors and those could stay on your credit for quite a while and also impact your score. Making sure that you apply for new accounts only as needed. I know, I know, I know how easy it is to go somewhere and they will tell you, well, we'll give you this percentage off if you get a credit card with us. And at the time, it seems like the best idea because you're saving some money, but making sure that that makes sense long-term. A lot of those cards are just for that store. You can't use it elsewhere and it helps you in that moment, but it might not help you in the future. So making sure that you only get new cards as needed making sure that you maximize the average age of your uh, credit lines on your credit. So I wanna tell a little story. I was 18 and my mom helped me get my first credit card. Um, and about five to seven years later, they started charging the annual fee on the card. Well, I didn't use the card very much. So I called and asked if I could have the fee waived. Unfortunately, they said no. So in the moment, the best thing for me to do was to close out the card. And um, it seemed like the right choice, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, that actually negatively impacted my credit because that was the longest credit line that I had on my credit report. So making sure not to make those really quick decisions just based on the moment, make sure that it makes sense for your credit file. Making sure you limit the total number of open accounts. So what we talked about earlier, making sure you only apply for so many new accounts, making sure you only have so many open. Um, CNBC did a thing where they found out that people with FICOs above 800 only have an average of eight of three open cards. So making sure that you limit the number of open cards that you have out there. And then inquiries. Um, it's very easy sometimes for a merchant to be like, oh, we can just check your credit real quick and tell you, making sure that you limit those as well. You don't want those inquiries on your credit if you don't need them because those will negatively impact your score. And then lastly, making sure that you review your credit once a year. You have the opportunity. There are a lot of really great providers out there that you can actually monitor your credit with, but making sure that you are actively going out there at least once a year and checking your credit with all three bureaus to make sure that there's no errors on there. And if there are errors, making sure that you address them and get those, get those corrected. There is, um, due to COVID-19, there is a code that you can actually get added to your credit report if you have experienced any financial impact. Now, this is purely cosmetic. It does not improve your score, but the code does protect your Vantage score from any delinquent reporting being added to the account and any alerts from future employers, landlords, or different things that you're experiencing during a time of, of crisis. So know what options you have out there too. As we're going Going through this pandemic, if you have been financially impacted from it, then you definitely might want to look into that option. Tips for savings. So I know we all love talking about savings. Um, one thing I can recommend is don't keep your money at home. That is so risky. There is always the um, potential of loss or stolen. So making sure that you have your money somewhere where it is protected. Um, here at the credit union, we are actually covered with NCUA, which is a federal agency that provides 
deposit insurance to its depositors is very similar to FDIC. They both insure up to $250,000 per depositor, institution, and ownership category, so your money is protected. Then another way to save is what we talked about earlier, budgeting. So knowing where your funds are going, how much income you have going in, what you're spending everything on, you would allow yourself to have that opportunity to set aside what you need to go to the savings account. So I'd like to do another little thing where we can kind of get some comments back. I would love to hear where you think is a way for you to kind of cut back and save. So tell us some ways that you could cut back and save money. Then, Whitney, if I may share, for the first one, you asked um, if people are using any type of budgeting resource. I've heard a lot of people um, in the comments mention Mint is actually a great one. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that people are actually utilizing those things. Those are free products out there for you to be able to use, so it's great to hear. So next thing I would like to talk about is um, reaching out to your lenders and service providers to see if there's anything that they can do to assist you during your time of need. So lenders, um, actually here at the credit union during the shutdown, we did different things to try to help our members where we did skip a payment to try to push out payments to help them during their time in need. Uh, we did an emergency loan to be able to help our members. So there's different things that you should always go out there and look to see if you could take advantage of. Same with service providers. If you have a certain electric, electric company that you're utilizing or your cable, whatever it might be, it's, it never hurts to reach out and just ask if there's something they, they can do to help. Another way to save is um, we do have a lot of people working remotely now with the pandemic and making sure and keeping your energy usage low. It's very easy. I know when I'm at home, unfortunately, I tend to leave a lot of lights on in the house. Um, my husband usually gets on to me for that. So making sure that you uh, are keeping lights out and you're trying to really conserve as much energy as you can, that way saving you whenever you do get electric bill, gas bill, whatever it might be. This last year, I know we didn't get to take as many vacations as we would like. Uh, Miss Washima, she is a vacationer. I always live through her with her vacations. So um, one thing to save money as well is making sure that you, if you do vacation, do it locally, save money that way. There is, it's very easy to be able to save and do different things, especially within the DFW area, but maybe within Texas and the surrounding states. So there's other ways to kind of get away. Next, I would like to talk about emergency funds. So I hit on it a little bit earlier of making sure and setting aside some funds for unforeseen circumstances that come up. The best way to kind of get that started is starting by saving one month's worth of a mortgage payment or rent. Putting that into a savings account to earn some interest, having it set aside so you don't touch it, and then build from there. Build to then now one month's worth of income. And then truly aiming for three to six months worth of income of that setting aside. Because with, with all y'all know, with the pandemic, unfortunately, there's so many unknowns. If you were to be laid off, you want to make sure that you have something to help you during that time of need. Now for our homeowners out there, making sure that we're setting aside money for potential home repairs. Unfortunately, the pandemic did not stop the home repairs. So if you have an air conditioner go out, your water heater, different things like that, you wanna make sure that you have prepared for those as well. And then also making sure that you have some type of fund set up for special purchases. So if you plan on buying a home, getting a down payment for that, maybe a down payment for a new car that you're going to purchase or for that vacation that hopefully we'll be able to take in the coming months, um, setting some money aside for that as well. And then the last tip I can give you for savings is getting creative. Maybe um, you are a gift giver and maybe you got that creative nature where you have the Pinterest app on your phone and creating gifts instead of going out and buying them. And then utilizing coupons. There are tons of apps out there that can give you different coupons for different things to save money. It's very simple to use and it saves you in the long run. And then lastly, my favorite, the cook at home. Like I told you all, DoorDash has been my friend here lately and is very convenient to have the, uh, the food at my doorstep, but um, it is very surprising when you look at how much money you save by cooking at home versus eating out. Those are some great tips. We actually have some viewers that were engaging. 
one person said they were able to manage their subscriptions. And um, somebody commented taking a local vacation and recommended San Angelo. We happen to have branches in San Angelo. So nice. we definitely agree with you there. I love it. I love the interaction. Thank you all so much for participating. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was buying or refinancing a home uh, during COVID-19. So as you know, or might know, the mortgage rates are at historic lows during this time. So it might be the perfect time to purchase or refinance a home. So making sure that you are weighing that option. There are some cases where it is actually, in some cases, cheaper to purchase a home than it is what you're paying in rent. So if you do decide that you want to purchase, making sure that you look for an equal housing lender. Really great note. We have some great mortgage team here at Texas Trust that would love to help you with that. And then making sure what we talked about earlier, have you set aside money to be able to have for the down payment if you are purchasing? And then understanding what other things come with the purchase, like property taxes, homeowners insurance, or HOA fees. Uh, my husband and I, during the summer, was actually able to refinance our home. We were able to pull out equity out of it and build a covered patio, which was great because we didn't get to go on vacation anywhere. So we were able to use our patio as kind of our getaway. But that is an option for you. If you don't want to do home repairs, maybe you want to consolidate some debt. So always good to look into. Investing your money. So making sure that you know that it is never too late or too soon to start investing, especially for retirement. Um, instead of focusing on the day-to-day -day volatility, making sure you're looking at the big picture. What is your long-term goal? I know it's very easy, especially for younger viewers, for you to say, oh my goodness, retirement is so far away. But I will tell you, time goes quick. And making sure and setting that money aside now is huge. It will pay off in the long run. So making sure that you are taking advantage of that. We have some really great financial advisors here at the Credit Union. So if that is something that you're interested in, please let us know. We'd love to be able to help you. Lastly, we have our COVID-19 assistance page. So on here, you will see some different options to be able to help you in this time of need. Um, our first one is Mission Arlington. So thank you again to Jim and Ms. Tilly for coming on and kind of giving us some information about what they're able to do. That is a huge impact that they play for our communities. And we are so thankful to have them here locally within DFW to be able to assist. So you always have these options of different things and making sure that you understand that you you have options out there is the biggest part and we are here to help you um, if you ever just need someone to talk to so and with Shima I'm going to turn it back over to you ma'am thank you so much and thank you to our viewers for engaging with us um, we did have a question about um, home remodeling a lot of us are staying at home spending a lot more time at home how do you suggest our members or community um, kind of budget towards that that's a great one i know um I know if y'all have been out to Home Depot or Lowe's here lately, it is swarmed with people of getting and buying stuff to fix their home. So I think kind of creating that plan, Washima, of making sure that you know what you're, if it's say you're replacing floors, redoing your kitchen, whatever it might be, budgeting at first. So that way you don't get um, over your head in it whenever you start to actually start doing things. And then if you do need that option, like I said, we have our mortgage department here that can help help. We have home improvement loans or maybe do um, pull equity out of your home, different things. But I think the biggest part is doing that upfront part of really budgeting and planning to make sure that you know what you're getting into. Fantastic. And I would encourage our viewers to continuously ask questions. If you still have any questions or anything you want to share, um, I do want to share a few things that our viewers have um, with some tips that they have provided. So meal prepping, uh, making sure that if you have a trial subscription that it does not become something permanent. So if you do wish to cancel the trial, do so before the uh, time frame is over. And then being sure to plug in savings as a part of your budget. Absolutely, it is important to pay yourself first and allocate at least 10% or whatever you can manage to um, from your income for savings. 
do you have anything you can add about life insurance? Um, a little bit about what the company has to provide. That's a great one. So here at the credit union, just like I was talking about earlier with investments and mortgage, we actually offer, we partner with a company that does um, insurance as well. So that is something that definitely look into, make sure that you kind of plan for the future, making sure that you know, your family is protected in case something does happen to you. We are in a time of so many unknowns, which I know is unfortunate, but we have to prepare for that. And we have to prepare to make sure our family is taken care of if something were to happen to us. So I think that's a great one, Wishima. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. I don't see any more questions. Well, I guess this concludes our Q&A session for today. I would like to thank our viewers for engaging with us. If you would like to learn more or become a member or talk to us directly, please feel free to contact us using the information on the screen. We have some links posted in the comments for if you would like to schedule an appointment or have one of us give you our call. Mark your calendars. Our next Facebook Live webinar is going to be on Tuesday, February 9th at noon. You will get to hear from our industry experts from HESC and Inspired about financing college during COVID-19. This will be a great webinar for current or future college-bound students as well as their parents. We do plan on coming back every month to talk about different topics such as mortgage, which is coming up in March, understanding credit, Medicare, Social Security, and so forth. So we have a lot in store for 2021. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's webinar. And remember, Texas Trust Credit Union is here with you every step of the way for all of your financial needs. See you next time.